Weekend, you've got legends, Breeze and legends, uh, Brady. And then you have, you know, the MVP and the next big star, Mahomes. And Jared Goff has been marginalized to just a guy. I would make the argument that year three of Tom Brady's career, there were a lot of similarities to Goff. California, 6'4", little thin, very coachable, absolute grinder, kind of a legendary growing head coach. You know, I think people forget, Peter, you were around. Brady today isn't Brady 15 years ago. Go back to Tom when he broke into the league. I'd argue he looked a lot like Goff. Well, he certainly didn't have the, the weaponry that Goff has uh and and yeah colin he was still becoming a really good quarterback but the gigantic difference is that golf in year one was highly questionable brady in year one won a super bowl and so and brady in year three won a super bowl if you if you don't count brady's rookie year when he didn't play um but i hey look i think the future is very bright for golf he's gone from being a guy who everybody was wondering if he was going to be the b-word the bust you know after his first year with the jeff fisher staff but you know from the minute that sean McVay got in there McVay was going to uh mold him and craft him and and i think he's done a great job and hey look golf has as much as in the last say six weeks golf has had some really shaky moments his game against the eagles was ugly but i will say this He's made some throws this year. You go back to the Thursday game against the Minnesota Vikings. Yep. He made two throws that Dan Marino would say those are some all-time throws. So I, I, I'm I'm bullish on on golf. I think he's going to be very good. Listen, the, the Rams are interesting because you know they, people say it's a copycat league. They did a couple of things that were very unique. They refused to play any of their best players a snap in the preseason. They've had lighter practices. They rested Todd Gurley for three weeks. Literally, did, uh, they went late into the season get a C.J. Anderson. And I have this feeling that and they went into big free agency with some guys with reputations that weren't great. Talib and Dominican Sue, Marcus Peters. That if it's a copycat league like everybody claims, Peter, if the Rams win, will it? I mean, we've already seen in the coaching hires, people are looking at the Rams and McVay to duplicate that. I kind of feel like between the Eagles and the Rams, Peter, they both went big into free agency. And if the Rams win this weekend, like the Eagles, that used to be kind of a no-no. People rolled their eyes at uh, non-prudent spending. I kind of feel like if the Rams win, there's going to be a little change in free agency. Am I reaching there? Well, the last time a team did as much as the Rams did, both in trade and free agency in an offseason, you know, a contending team was the Eagles when they had the dream team. And that obviously was a huge bust. But this team, you know, and, and clearly when you trade for veteran guys, you know, it, it has the potential to bust. But for the most part, it's worked for this team this year. Um, the one interesting thing I think about the Rams is how Todd Gurley has gone from being a top three and maybe top one back in the NFL to being a little bit hurt. And now he might be, might be, I'm not saying he is, he might be in a job share with a guy who was on the street five weeks ago. Yeah. You know, and who had been cut this year by three teams with losing records, Denver, Carolina, and Oakland. And now, uh, you know, just wind him up and throw him out there, and he rushes for 125 yards. What guy in history, I'd love to know the answer to this question, has come onto a playoff team who's going to have a, a bye in the first round of the playoffs, who's walked into this playoff team from the street, from his couch, and three weeks in a row gained over 125 yards on the ground? It's, it's unheard of. Um, and finally, in, in the NFC, your gut feeling tells you who's winning that game. Your gut feeling. My gut feeling tells me uh, New Orleans. But I'll tell you, when you lose your best front seven uh, interior player in Sheldon Rankins, um, you know, Dennis Allen has got to have a good plan for uh, what has been a, a really, really good running game of the Rams. Because the Rams, look... Everybody thinks that Sean McVay is some master, you know, fill the air with footballs guy. But I think he might try to run it down the Saints' throat 
in part because the Saints' defense is a, is, is a lesser defense without Rankins, and in part as an attempt to try to take the crowd out of this game. Colin, I've covered the NFL for 35 years. I, I, I can't say that I've ever heard a crowd louder than when I was in the stadium in the Superdome last week. They're down 14 nothing to Philadelphia, and that crowd is still almost at full throat the next time the Eagles touch the ball. So I think that could be an issue for the Rams. Uh, that's why the Saints are favored. Let's move over to the AFC. Uh, I think Chris Jones, if he becomes a problem to block for the Patriots, will know it very early. In all five of the Patriots' road losses, they didn't lead any of them in the first quarter. In fact, trailed in four of five. Generally, they're not out-schemed. There's a physical component they don't match up against. They didn't match up with Tennessee's defensive front. Uh, they didn't have Josh Gordon. They struggled against the Steelers. So when they've struggled on the road, you've noticed it very early. Uh, it's not like they've blown leads. So I kind of think Chris Jones will have a major impact. If he is making, if they have to double him and it stalls the running game, Tom's in trouble. Who do you think plays a crucial role for the Chiefs or Patriots this weekend? Justin Houston. Remember, in week six, when the Patriots and Chiefs played, the Patriots put up 43 points, went up and down the field, 500 yard total yards or whatever it was, and what I really remember about that game is that Brady had a lot of time. And, and to me, Justin Houston, he wrecked Andrew Luck in the second half of that game yeah. last week. Yep. So when, when, you've, when you've got D Ford here, Justin Houston here, Chris Jones in the middle, that's really, really tough to handle. And to me, Josh McDaniel's biggest challenge is keeping Tom Brady relatively clean so he's going to have enough time. But just remember this. I, I say that about those three guys, but I, I think the, I think the, the, the Chiefs are going to have something up their sleeve so that James White doesn't wreck the defensive game plan. Because just look, last week, 15 catches. James White has been a gigantic force for the Patriots in all their recent playoff games. So the Patriots lean on him when they desperately need... Uh, you know, an outlet back uh, out of the backfield. Uh, by the way, it's hard enough to win in the road. Patrick Mahomes is the league MVP. I've been told he's your MVP choice. Go back to your 30 years covering the NFL. Uh, people have compared him to Favre. Do you feel like, remember, before Favre, there was no Favre. I don't know who they were comparing Favre to. But I hear Favre with Mahomes, and I see some of it. Is, is that the prototype for you? He is far. He, I mean, that's what he's going to play like. Um, and and look, I think the one difference between them is that Favre was a wild and uncontrollable cult in his first two or three years to the point where I think it was year three that Mike Holmgren, Steve Mariucci, Andy Reid, the entire offensive staff in Green Bay sat in a meeting one Monday after a desultory uh, Packers lost that that Favre played relatively out of control and and Mike Holmgren took a vote as to who should be the starting quarterback I think it was either Favre or Ty Detmer now Favre won but it wasn't unanimous they don't have the same issue with Patrick Mahomes he does what Andy Reid tells him to do right you know as opposed to Favre necessarily all the time doing what Holmgren told him to do but they do play a lot alike, and I think he's, I mean, he's only played 18 games. We're already fitting him for a gold jacket, but I, the only guy who reminds me this early in his career of a guy you say, man, this guy looks like he's going to be an incredible superstar for a long time. I mean, I got to go back to Dan Marino, and and that's that's the one who Mahomes, just his impact incredibly early reminds me of. By the way, it sounds like you're leaning Kansas City. Now, I'm leaning New England. But believe me, if I were a gambler, I would, I would, I would take a leash and I would tie it around my belt and I'd put a lock on it and I would forbid myself from going to the local wherever you go to gamble. Or I'd put a lock on my phone so I couldn't call my bookie. Because that's an un, you know, potentially, in my opinion, I think it is ridiculous to bet 
on the Patriots and Chiefs. I, I wouldn't bet the over, wouldn't bet the under, wouldn't bet the Chiefs, wouldn't bet New England. I just think it's a totally unpredictable game. Peter King, three-time sports writer of the year, NBCSports.com. Read his stuff. We will. Have a fun weekend, Peter. Thank you, Colin. Great stuff. Uh, Dontrell Inman. No, but Peter doesn't think it's a lock. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, how do you feel about that? Well, You've already I, bet the games, well, haven't you? Well, no. One of them, I feel, is the lock of the year. By the way, um, did, did, it, did they move the Patriot-Kansas City game? No. Because I'm reading the weather forecast. It's oh, 33 we degrees. You know what? On behalf of all the weather people in Kansas City, all the meteorologists, I, I apologize. On behalf of all the meteorologists in Kansas City, thank you for giving us the accurate weather forecast oh. as opposed to sticking with i said it's going to be an arctic blast and i'm sticking to it 50 degree swing in two days that's what the weather does no. colin it changes that's what meteorologists do they they follow the weather change and then inform us couldn't see those clouds coming a couple news. days ago all right uh brady is the great manipulator and so is belichick that next blazing two top of the hour it's the herd